Hi, I'm going to tell you something and you just see what goes through your head. I have Asperger's syndrome. I'm autistic. What goes through your head when I say that? If you don't know me and you're not really following my blogs, which you may be. But just anyone. I'm tired of people's reactions when I say this. When I say I have Asperger's syndrome, people just look at me like, what? What? I'm tired of the stereotyping. I guess when you say Asperger's syndrome, you think of some nerdy dude in a science lab who's really dry and, and has a dry kind of a personality. Well, I'll tell you something. That's not most of us. We all have different personalities. First of all, I'm a girl. I'm a female. I present differently. And because I'm a girl, I didn't get diagnosed until I was 26 years old. I've spent long enough fighting to have people believe me, but this is an ongoing battle. I don't go around broadcasting it, but I'm not ashamed of it either. In fact, I'm proud of it because now I understand why I'm different. Now I can put my finger on what it was all those years that made me feel so different and so alienated from other people and other girls. And I struggled I struggled and struggled through life because of these ridiculous stereotypes because it, it didn't even occur to me that I could have Asperger's syndrome. I basically just thought that I was defective in some way that, you know, I was I was weird, I was an oddball, I was stupid, and that I needed to be, be more acceptable and, you know, pretend and perform to fit in. Well, I'm tired of doing that. I'm me. I'm multifaceted. The neuropsych that diagnosed me when I was talking to her, I said, I don't understand. Am I a nerd or am I a rebel? I don't know what I am. And she's like, well, the nerd is at the core, but the rebel is on the surface. I kind of get that. I'm sort of oppositional and I question things and, you know, I like to go my own way and figure out my own system, but part of that is because of the way that I learn. It's actually really hard for me to process information coming coming in or to learn in a, a, a typical way, and it always frustrated me and made me feel stupid. Um, I still don't quite understand how I learn. I basically learn in a very autistic way. I have to see it sequentially, you know, step one, step two, step three, and equals this, um, or therefore, this is the result. I'm sort of, I'm on another plane when I'm learning. I mean, I don't, I have a very hard time with verbal directions for something like building, you know, a drawer set. Screw it on here and do this and that to the left, to the right. <gasps> just want to see the map. I just want to do it. I just want to figure it out. I don't want to be, I don't want to waste my time with all these verbal directions. I just want to get my hands on it and you know just build it make it happen that's what I did with learning how to edit videos how to make music I didn't get the directions I just did it I it's a mystery to me and sometimes it's frustrating because it it it's a barrier and I tend to avoid learning new information because of that um, anyway what I'm saying is basically I'm I'm tired of people telling me that, oh, how can you be Asperger's? Oh, but you're doing so well. You're so, we must be really high functioning. Oh, you're too, oh, you're too pretty. Oh, girl, um, you, you speak too well. I mean, it's really, it's, you know, what's wrong with me liking to look pretty? What am I supposed to do? Go around and, you know, wear uh, dorky clothing? And I mean, no offense. I mean, I kind of, you know, I, I don't, I, I am a dork. I'm, I'm absolutely a dork, 100%, but, I mean, what am I supposed to wear no makeup and, act? I mean, I'm a girl. I'm a girl, too. I mean, yes, I do organize and collect my makeup in sequential form, and I have it all planned out, and I love to collect clothes, and I love to go hunt for clothes in thrift stores because I hate to pay retail prices when I can go and find cool clothes for free or for cheap, and, uh, you know, and I... I like to wear things that stand out and are a little bit different. That means something to me personally. I have sensory issues. I don't like to wear high heels. They they hurt my. They bother my feet. I um, I don't like starchy tight clothing. I like I do like tight clothing, but it needs to be super comfy and to stretch. Um, you know, underneath 
underneath what you see, I'm very Asperger's. I'm very autistic. I mean, I'm Rose first. You know, I'm trying not to think of myself as, oh yeah, I have Asperger's and my name's Rose, but I'm going through this phase of acknowledging, not only acknowledging, but identifying with the fact that I have Asperger's. Maybe I have taken that too far and I've really, really, because I've become so aware of the way that I really am um, and all my, uh, all the troubles that I have that are related to Asperger's. I have a hard time with changes. Um, I have a hard time, like I said, processing information unless it's um, given to me slowly and in a sequential form. Uh, you know, the direction directions need to be very, 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 very clear to me and be in order for me to understand them. Sometimes, because I output so well, people don't understand how I can't understand, and I don't understand how I can't understand. But ultimately, it was always related to the fact that I have Asperger's Syndrome, that I'm autistic, and that I do have the learning deficits that are associated with that. Um, I'm good with words, uh, I, but you know, it doesn't come natural, naturally to me. You know, I love this baby here. It's fun. It's really fun to read the dictionary. I think it's fun. And I have it right here and I love my thesaurus too because, because we, I, I, we want to express ourselves. A lot of uh, we autistics want to, we love to use to find out the meaning of words and apply them in the correct context because it helps us to materialize the pictures and the pattern. I think in pictures and patterns first and like I said they become words but only if my memory if my if the, the, the words are stored in my memory and I've looked them up and I've read them and I know what they mean and it is very relieving for me to um, to apply a word to something I'm feeling it you know I'm walking that borderline between autism and you know I'm not typical but you know sort of close closer to that and so I do some I do need the words to be able to understand how I'm thinking you know and that's that's why we script that's why we talk to ourselves to process language it does take longer for us to process language uh, if I have a conversation with somebody, it tends to come from, I'm thinking, I have to think about what I'm saying. I, I can't just say it. Um, that just doesn't happen. And it's hard. You know, I will, it's not like I can't talk if I'm not completely thinking about it. I guess when I'm really comfortable and at home, I can talk, but I'm, I'm less wordy than when I'm in a conversation with somebody and I'm supposed to be speaking about a certain subject or whatnot. I don't know if I make sense, but anyway, I'm tired of, of having people not believe that I'm, that I have Asperger's syndrome because I'm a woman. People tend to automatically associate Asperger's syndrome with a male. Dr. Hans Asperger himself only studied boys. That's why little girls don't often get diagnosed. And this is really, really bad because little girls are at risk for all kinds of problems when they don't get diagnosed, especially as they get older. They're real b abuse magnets. You know, um, they're vulnerable, they're naive. You know, developmentally we're younger, and if we don't really don't have the guidance and, uh, you know, strong parental guidance around us, we're really at risk to fall into the hands of the wrong people. I don't interpret the social nuances. I'm not blind to people. I feel energy and energies and auras, but I do miss the... Rudy Simone always said, we miss the obvious, but sense what's not obvious. So we'll often sense what's um, the energy, you know, and because we sense the energy, we mimic it and we're able to imitate it. And we tend to be able to do this a bit better than the boys can, although some boys can be quite good at it too and may, they may they may not get diagnosed for that reason not all people with Asperger's and autism are antisocial that's not that's not true I I st struggle with feeling lonely because it's really hard for me to just spontaneously hang out with people 
I have to have it. I have to plan myself for it. I have to prepare for a social interaction. I do enjoy social interactions, you know, especially with other Aspies, with but with people. I enjoy people. I love people. I care about people, and I care about humanity. I like to do my music. I like to perform and share share my music with others. And you know, I I'd, I'd like to go to poetry readings and share my poetry. It is easier for me to socialize when there is um, a, a specific reason for it, you know, like a poetry reading or a discussion group about something. It's much easier for me to socialize because there's a subject that I can draw upon. But, I mean, it's, it's hard because it can be very lonely. We do like people and the misconception is that we don't. Ignorant people, stop telling me that I'm not autistic. I know who I am. I know how I think and I fought very very hard for my diagnosis because I was tired of getting misunderstood and treated treated like badly because I am you know appeared I appear to be eccentric and quirky and some as a female one of the things that that became attributed with um, unjustly and unfairly was being uh, having some sort of mental illness you know if I'm excitable because I'm overstimulated and I'm excited by the the social energy in the room and I'm getting on really getting into a narrow subject and I'm kinda of talking quickly I could be accused of being bipolar or you know just weird in general you know I've often been accused also of being high or drunk, um, not drunk as much but high or stoned on something when I'm not it's just the way I am and it's frustrating because people don't automatically associate Asperger's with girls. If I were a guy and I fit the stereotype and I was behaving that way, people might think, oh, he's Asperger's. But with me, that's not what comes to their mind whatsoever. Their mind is completely, you know, fogged up with this stupid stereotype. And I'm not it. And they don't think about there's no precedent for a girl with Asperger's. It hasn't been studied very much, hasn't been talked about. We're only just beginning to learn the characteristics and the traits of Asperger's in females based on um, people like Dr. Tony Atwood, who writes about women in Asperger's, and Rudy Simone, who wrote a book called Asperger's. I have Asperger's syndrome. I'm autistic. I always was. I always stemmed. I always needed my alone time. I always had sensory issues and I always thought in pictures first. And I have all the other traits of autism underneath. I'm pretty damn classic. I'm a girl. I collect, you know, flowers, you know, hair pieces and you know, jewelry and clothes and I'm, you know, what can I say? I'm a female. You know, I'm not interested in the, you know, trains and, and uh, trucks and boy stuff. I'm a girl. I dissect everything. You know, it's classic. I've written a blog about it. Uh, females and Asperger's, we do very much exist. Have a read if you want to know what the characteristics of females with Asperger's are like. Okay, I'm a girl outside the box. My occupations are as follows. Late diagnosed autism survivor, autism advocate, blogger, music artist, mama kitty cat. That's my code word for Aspie Mommy because I'm a mommy, two little boys, spiritual warrior, social justice advocate, and school of life graduate. Diploma only. I don't have my PhD yet or anything like that. Still working on it. A girl outside the box.